The following is an exclusive presentation of Cablevision Local Programming, TV that's close to home. He's working to evaluate school district expenses and to lower school district property taxes. We'll find out how when we speak with Suffolk County Legislator Lou DeMauro next on Cablevision's Meet the Leaders. Pat Halpin and welcome to Cablevision's Meet the Leaders, a program designed to inform and update you about your community and issues right here on Long Island. With us now is Suffolk County Legislator Lou DeMauro. Legislator DeMauro, it's good to have you on Thank Meet you, the Leaders. Thank you for having me back. You know, uh, last time we were here, you were talking about a commission that you're part of that looked uh, very carefully at, at school property taxes and ways uh, to economize. And, and since that time, the national recession has hit our region and, and the rest of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, with a big wallop, and if anything, there's going to be a lot more focus on property taxes at every level of government, but especially at the school level, which makes up about 66 percent mm -hmm. of a person's property taxes. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about some of the recommendations that were made and, and, uh, and, and what can be done to, to help school districts save money and hold down property taxes. Well, thanks for asking, and it's now more important than ever, <clears throat> as you pointed out, uh, that we take a good, hard focus on how we're operating our school districts. Last time I was here, we were just getting underway. Uh, now we've produced the report. We've come up with various ways that we can begin to try and cut expenses and be more efficient within our school districts. Uh, some of the things that we came up with uh, some of them have already been tried. Some would require state legislation. Mm -hmm. Some would also require that our local school boards get involved and actually change administratively what's happening in a local school district. I'll give you a couple examples. We could um, look at uh, providing health insurance, for example, uh, to the school district employees through the county system. Uh, this commission set up a formula where we can actually plug in the insurance uh, that's being uh, purchased on the school district level into the county formula and determine whether or not these school districts would save money. Another idea that this commission came up with was regionalizing uh, transportation, uh, busing our kids to school in the morning. You know, think about it. If you have uh, two districts that are contiguous, one next to the other, mm -hmm. and one bus is going down one street in one direction, and one bus is coming down the other street in the other direction, well, why not have one bus instead of two? So if we take a more regionalized approach to how we bus our children to school, to and from school, we can sub uh, save a substantial amount. Um, as a matter of fact, the commission pointed out that if we regionalize, we project as high as maybe $29 million county wide uh, just in savings. Another thing that, that we could do just very quickly uh, would be to look at consolidating not the school districts themselves, and in fact this commission had a mandate not to consolidate the school districts and not to increase class size, but we can look at consolidating administrative functions. County Executive Levy has also chimed in on that. Just recently, mm -hmm. County Executive Swazi has done the same in Nassau County. And the more we add uh, voices to that chorus calling for that type of reform, I think we'll start to see some results. So how could that work if you were to um, consolidate administrative functions? Well, let's take, for example, you have three school districts, or three or four school districts, and they all have various uh, human resources departments, purchasing <coughs> departments, uh, the really the back office accounting departments, whatever they may have, uh, instead of having three separate departments in three separate districts, maybe we can have one department covering three districts. Uh, the Easton BOCES has already implemented this on a pilot level, a pilot program level, in some of the eastern school districts, and it's working. It's saving money. Well, it would seem to me that it would work. I mean, you have... Uh one administrative function for a county government the size of Suffolk County, which covers everything from Montauk to Orient Point all the way to Nassau County. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those functions, you know, thanks to PCs and, and um, you know, modern technology, are being done on a consolidated basis by corporations uh, that operate all over the country. Very true. And, and that's an example of how consolidation could work. But remember, you're dealing with something very unique here. You're dealing with education of children. Uh, and what's very important to people in our communities is retaining that local control on how their children are educated. And but I isn't agree it about that. the quality of education? Uh, you're talking about things that don't affect classroom size, that uh, don't affect uh, the quality of the teachers. In other words, you're not going right. to be 
cutting people's salaries, and it, and it doesn't affect the leadership in the school building, mm -hmm. or for that matter, the school district. Uh, very true, absolutely. I just, try to, I just want to make the point yeah. that we're not talking about consolidating the districts themselves, but as you point out, consolidating the administrative Although functions. Although some people would argue that we should consolidate districts, that we shouldn't have 70-plus school districts in Suffolk County and another 56 in Nassau. So, some would argue that. Um, I don't ascribe to that point of view. Uh, I have two small children. They are going to a local school district right here in my legislative district, and I enjoy having that direct link and contact with my school board and how my children are educated. You make a good point about that. Uh, other thing that people say when you talk about education is that the two most important factors when it comes to high-quality education First is the quality of the teacher in front of that classroom, mm -hmm. and the second is the quality of the leadership in the building. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you have a good principal and good teachers, you're going to have a good school. I, I fully agree, and, and the way you get there is when the teachers and the principal have that direct contact with the parents and addressing their concerns directly, as opposed to having some big bureaucratic monolithic government uh, entity out there, I think it's more effective for so education. What, so what has been the response of uh, the education community to the recommendations of the report? Well, I've uh, taken the report and brought it everywhere I go, uh, whether I'm addressing community groups, civic associations, and I'm asking for help. I'm asking uh, people to join me and asking uh, their local school boards as well as their elected state representatives to take a hard look at this report and seriously consider the recommendations. I've also uh, brought a copy of the report to all of the school board members throughout Suffolk County as well as all our elected officials in Suffolk County on the state level and uh, that report just came out a few months ago. I'm giving them an opportunity to review it and then going into next year I'm going to be advocating for the recommendations any hostility? Who's, who's opposed to what you've recommended? Who's opposed to mm -hmm. consolidating back office operations, uh, doing the same thing with transportation and other support services? Well, there's no opposition yet that I know of, and here's why. Why? This commission was comprised of all of the different interests in the debate. We brought to the table the teachers, the superintendents, tax groups, um, uh, all the associations that would have something to say about how we run our schools and how we fund them. The Commission only adopted recommendations that were unanimously voted on by the Commission members. So this report, I believe, deserves a little more attention than most other reports in that this is not me making these recommendations. These are the folks who are on the front lines who have the information are in a best position to make recommendations. It's their report, not necessarily How mine. big was the commission? The commission had, uh, I believe, 14 members in total. So it was a large working group. But the goal here was to, I would not have gone forward with not, without having every voice at the table because what I didn't want to happen was to exclude one perspective and then we would, you know, just wind up disintegrating down into a shouting match over recommendations right. as opposed to agreement. There were some recommendations that were not, uh, that were not capable of getting uh, unanimously adopted, and they were not included in the report. But we came up with 25 solid recommendations that could save an awful lot. And 25 uh, recommendations that received the unanimous support of this very broad-based group of people affected directly and, and, and indirectly. Uh, by how we fund and operate our schools. That's correct. All right. Well, that's going to be very interesting reading. If people want to get a copy of that report, where can they get it? Uh, just go to the legislative uh, Suffolk County Legislature homepage, mm -hmm. and there's a tab right there. It says School Commission Report, and it's available uh, to anyone who wants to so take a look at Google it. So just Google Suffolk County Legislature, and you go right to that homepage, and, and, and you can there. download it right there. Absolutely. All right. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to continue our conversation with Suffolk County Legislator Lou DeMar. I want to know now what he's going to do about county taxes and the county budget. So stay with us. We'll be right back.